afternoon. Hello. Uh, a stunning win, obviously, on Wednesday. I'm just wondering what that has done for the mood around here, and especially leading up to this weekend's Merseyside derby. Oh, it's really good. Of course, it's um, it's like when you have, when you play a good football game. It's not that you that you leave it behind you an hour later or whatever. So it carries you through the week. Usually, that's how it is. But um, we all are long enough in the business to know that it's. Um, it's a good piece for um, in in the in the all over preparation for the for the next game, but it's only a, a little piece. So it's like it's it's of course we know we can do things like that. We knew it before, uh, and now we proved it again. And so we have to try everything to play um, a very very similar game again because we play against a really good side with um, yeah they are. Uh, a side will be really on their toes. How we can imagine? It's a it's a big one. For us and for them as well. So, and um, that's why we treat that game. We try to be perfectly prepared, and then play the best football we are able to play. And yet, despite that, you've never lost a Merseyside derby. There's not a single member of your playing squad here that's lost a Merseyside derby either. So, how much does experience count in, in games like this? Oh, it helps, of course, but it's not. Yeah, you, the only thing what it tells you. Less than 100%, and you will lose. <laughs> so, because we had, I think we always had pretty good games. Last year, I remember we had a lot of um, lineup issues, had to change a lot. I think it was the last one there uh, when, it, when we drew. We were completely in charge of the game until the last couple of minutes, and these last couple of minutes, Everton was close to, 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 to yeah. To win it, actually, and um, so that was. Uh, there are always different situations, but it's. But what it tells the experience tells you that you have really to be 100% spot on and um, try really everything, fight each little fight, um, be ready for all the challenges, all that stuff. But stay, stay clear, stay fair, stay um, aggressive. Yes, but in the most legal way, and all, all these things. That's a very important part of that game. And just finally, for me at least, I'm just wondering how Roberto Firmino is, and, and given how much Divock Origi likes scoring against Everton and <laughs> how he's done well recently, what his chances are, or maybe what he has to do to be part of your starting line. He was out there in the running yesterday, so but we have to see how he reacts. So, yeah, I, I will see him now in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, then again, first time since yesterday. He is very positive, <laughs> but that's Bobby's nature as well, so um, we have to see. Um, I, I don't see any other player having. Well, okay, we have maybe two or three more of them, but will even be in contention for, for for that game after after the, the the little problem he had. So it looks really good, but if he will be ready for tomorrow, I don't know. In a second. Yeah, when we talk about hostile atmosphere, there is it the kind of atmosphere that brings the best out of your players? Hopefully, it was. We, 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 football players like that. And now I experience now it was always, of course, uh, the, the, the two, the, the fans the, of Everton doesn't want us to win anything, and probably our fans um, for them it's the same um, on the other side. So that's how it is. But in the game, it's, all, it's only very emotional, very, very passionate, and, and all that stuff. And I hope it will be like that. That's how football should be. So um, there are other, other um, um, atmospheres in the Premier League where you think, wow. What are we playing for today? Is something special we don't know about? So that's uh, but that's um, where it's really against the opponent constantly, and where the people forget to 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 support their own team. Um, that's what I never really understand in football. But it's good, isn't they really support their team? And um, so now let's let's go there and 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 yes, and use the atmosphere, of course, eh, because it will be loud, it will be wild, it will be everything, and we have to deliver that on the pitch as well. We've spoken so much as well about the threat that you're from three. Opposition teams. What about your full backs in terms of their attacking prowess as well? And Andy Robertson topping the charts for goals and chances created from, from defence, and, and Trent's delivery, three assists on, on Wednesday night as well. Yeah, it's important. That that's modern football. If you ask a young boy what what was your pre, uh, your your favourite position, I don't think a lot of boys would say I want to be a fullback. <laughs> but uh, the uh, football changed, eh? so that's um, they. Um, they became much more important. That's how I, said. I was a football, a fullback myself for a decent part of my career, but uh, it didn't look complete. It did look completely different to what the boys are doing. But at least I know that um, there are a lot of things to do. You have to be um, really strong defensively, but on the other hand side, because um, a lot of teams clear the wing for the fullbacks offensively. Um, if you are then able to 
to be open-minded enough and have the football quality for that to see some people in the same shirt in the box, uh, that helps a lot. And in that game, it was exceptional. Eh? I, I don't think I ever um, was part of a game that somebody had a hat-trick and, uh, and, and assists. I don't think so. So it was special. Did he get the match ball? At, finally? Huh? Yeah. So he wanted it, so he got it. Um, so that's how it is. Eh? So it's, um, it's, it's, it was really cool. And so now let's, let's try to, to do something like that again. Um, Jürgen, when you talk about the experienced players that you have and you take it game by game in this run in, do you look to make changes, rotate, because of you've got this European game coming up next week? Well, I don't think we make changes because. It it's not next week, it's a week after. Week after so yeah, yeah, no problem. I would be really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no problem, move it a week. Uh, that, that, that. <laughs> all good, all good. So uh, we don't make a change, uh, of course, changes because of that game. Um, so the, it's a long time until then. No, we know we have to see. It's about the opponent. That's how we did it for this game. We made a couple of changes after the United game. It was really close. Huh? Sunday, Wednesday is, is pretty much uh, the, the smallest break you can have between two games if it's not Christmas. <laughs> um, and um, so that's, uh, we try to use that. When, as long as the boys are, are, are really fit, um, or uh, more fit than actually have to start, then we try to, to introduce fresh legs. We'll see if we do that for, tomorrow, for Sunday again. It's not, what is it, written in stone, so how do you say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, we, yeah, we, have to, we have to see. I'm only thinking, or my, my, I'm only thinking this in my crazy world that I live in. But um, in, a t in, in a running that you're having, in the position you are in the table, um, you look at, for example, Jordan Henderson on the bench. It, is it on Wednesday? Obviously, he played against Manchester United. But is it like everybody wants to be involved? How do they react to that now? When when you say to them, okay, I'm going to start you on the bench this time, and you know, play, they, play other people. They accepted. Yeah. I don't think they are happy. In this case, now it's about how can I, I, I know that so Hendo um, played a lot of games this season, and then it was for a while it was a little injury here, then problems there. But, but they all had Millie had um, sometimes, and all stuff. Chini had. Um, they all had. A, Nabi had to their, their problems. But the most important thing is. Um, to how, how will it fit for for, for the next opponent in the, in the different area? That's the first thing I think about, and then. If more things than one could fit, then you start thinking who is who, who maybe needs rest or whatever, who can or, or who is a little bit better in this or this. So that's what you think about. But um, um, Hendo is uh, plays a really really good season, and so uh, I told him he he looked like um, not happy but completely okay. So because in um, it was I think in this situation it was especially important because I don't tell players always before the game that they that they will not play they realize it they don't walk through the dressing room and say you don't play you don't play you don't play or whatever you see that on the training ground actually and it's a, as a player of Liverpool you you know that you don't play all the games pretty much and that's a normal situation but because of the the, the stories were made after uh, because of my reaction actually may have made after the United game I thought it makes sense that I tell him it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> because there was nothing, um, so that's it. But um, no, I don't tell the people, the players, always before the training. Actually, um, if they play or not in training, they see it, and then that's it. Michael. Jurgen, two goals for Sadio Mane in midweek. He's always been a goal scorer at Leipzig, at, uh, at Southampton as well. But this season, he's got more goals than ever before, and playing in a central position for you on Wednesday. What's led, do you think, to the improvement in his, his goal-scoring capability when you consider there's, there's still a quarter of the season left? No, I don't think there's a big improvement. And by the way, he didn't play in Leipzig, he played at Salzburg. But it's still a good player, uh, still a good club. Um, that's, um, no, Sadi is only coming in an age, in an age where, it's, where, 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 where things are becoming more natural for him. So it's not, it's not in the convincing, it's not the part where he has to convince everybody every day. Of his career, so that he's a good one now. Meanwhile, he, we, we all know that he's a world-class player, and he starts um, realizing that himself. So um, uh, that's how it is. Um, mixed up with his attitude and his work rate, it's, um, it can be a really could be a really decent career, uh, even better than it was so far. So um, 
he's a good boy and he had these skills. But for goal scoring, you need moments. You, look, we, we speak about the back heel goal. I, I didn't see it in the game. I saw it later. It was not only a back heel, it was really over Foster's shoulder. So yeah. with goal scoring, is always a little bit in luck, of luck is involved. And um, so... And and you have it in a moment like this, you have to use it like that because there will be other moments in life. That's how it is. No, but he had always the quality. He, he, if he, he scored for us a lot of goals, and if not, then he was always a proper threat, but gives us the space to score from another area. So it's just in a, in a, in a good moment of his career. Um, and it's the best age group you now where they all are. Um, so that's what now should yeah, continue and, 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 and develop in the next in the next few years because um, there's still a lot to come from these boys, of course. You know all about the passion involved in the Merseyside derby. It's also the fixture in the Premier League with, with the most standings off. So um, in terms of you know, the detrimental effect that the back could have if, if any of your players are red carded, how do you, in a game of this nature, try and make sure that your players sort of err on the side of controlled aggression? That's why we do it always. We always, we always want to be very, 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 very aggressive in the best football way. And I said it a couple of times. How we understand that being aggressive means you're ready to hurt yourself and not and not the other guy because there's nothing to do with it. There's a ball we fight for and not not a bone or whatever. That's it. that's how it is. I never understood that. We had similar stories in Germany. Uh, I really was not involved a lot in, in, in crazy games where something like this happened and the ref should have sent five players off or something like that. So I, I, that's for me, it's a big misunderstanding. Eh? The crowd wants to win. And for winning a game, you need, um, in the best way, 11 players. It helps. Um, and um, so you should, we should all really... And I, I, I thought, yeah, everyone knows that we had three or four harsh challenges in the past, eh, where we were once a bit more lucky and the other situation was a bit less lucky. I think Debok was really a harsh one and we had a handle with Barclay, I think. There were a few um, situations where we were um, where we suffered a little bit, but the last couple of games it was a football game, a very intense football game. I don't think we, the, 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 this generation of Everton Liverpool was played pool player did a lot for that statistic. I think the red cards must be a bit older, I think, uh, most of them at least, from other players, pundits maybe today or whatever. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, Carl, that's really confusing. <laughs> it's really, it's really, it's, I, if you are not there, you are actually not here. In terms of uh, how the last derby finished and the impact it had on, on Everton's seemingly had on Everton's results, do you expect to be almost even more motivated? Is it possible to be more motivated? Than oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's possible to be more motivated than ever that day. Or we more motivated than we were that day because it's just... But of course, the game, it was special. So we all know my celebration. I will not... Um, I will not do it again. That's how it is. And not that, that, that it happened today. It was very surprising. The ball was out. Verge already um, was halfway out. Verge turned already after his wonderful volley. And then pretty much um, yeah, Diff stayed awake and, and could score that goal. That was a very, very special moment. But it's not, not, that, it's not the time now, two days before the game, to really put the finger in the, in the open mound and say, uh, we want to have something like that again. That's all, that's all stories or stuff like that. We know that it will be really tough. It was that day really tough. Huh? It was that day really tough. It will be really tough tomorrow, I think. Everton often changed a little bit the, 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 the tactics, the approach against us, um, because it's so important. So um, we, we will have analyzed um, in a few minutes. And I will see, and it's really difficult. Is that against us as well, or is it against us completely different? So we, we, we really prepare the football part of the game. And it will be very emotional as well, and hopefully with a good end for us. And obviously, two goals from Virgil van Dijk. <laughs> is goals from other areas going to be important, you know, to supplement the, the front three? Because obviously a lot, a lot of emphasis is on them to score, but does the rest of the team is shifting a bit more? Yeah, 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 of course, but who scores is actually not important. It's all, you only talk about scoring from other areas in moments when the, the front three don't score. Then you always talk, yeah, we need goals from other areas. That's how it is. But it's the, the front three doesn't score in moments like this, if you want, because we are not exactly passing. 
uh, in the right way. It's not that we had 500 chances and missed them all in, in, in the games we didn't win. Um, and that's the situation. And yes, uh, of course, you need goals from set pieces. Very, very important. And I love the first one because it was a, it was a really, a really good cross. Eh? So it, I wouldn't say it was an easy goal for Wurz, but it was not the most difficult he scored in his life because the cross was already uh, worth a goal. Um, yeah, of course, you need to be ready for all, for, in all departments. And, and, and set pieces helped us, helped us, especially in the beginning of the season, quite a lot. That disappeared a little bit then in a, in a specific part um, but of the season. But now, hopefully, we can get it back and, and uh, because I love goals scoring from, from set pieces. It's just uh, you have a lot of set pieces in a game and so we need to be really good in that. Okay. <coughs> you can obviously Virgil took a lot of headlines from uh, Wednesday night, but how impressive has John Matip's form been since he's come into the side? Yeah, very, very impressive. And so that's, uh, I think we all know it. I think it was a Burnley game when he played first. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but it was not the Joel we had before he got injured, because when he got injured, he was outstanding. Uh, it was outstanding what he did there, especially the Napoli game, where he got the injury, he played a, a really, a really top-class game. Losing him then, in a pretty much wrong moment, but he's just a, he's just a really high, high, high-class player. So it's, um, he's doing the job uh, next to him. He's not asking for any um, Credit or whatever, it's just there. He loves what he's doing, so it's really, it's really nice to have him, to have him around. And um, we had now, meanwhile, a, a couple of different um, centre half couples, and they all worked really well. So that's um, that's the that's the best news. And hopefully now we can really, because the problem of centre half, that centre half situation like we had this year, I never had in my life. Uh, you have pretty much five centre halves with Ned Phillips as well, and I don't think we had. We don't have now three, only if we say Fabinho is a centre-half and Nate um, Phillips is on the way back. He trains now, at least fully, so that's just strange. So we were, we need a bit of luck that that all works out like that. And um, yeah, but he played fantastic the other night. Yes. Have you been surprised a little bit by the season Everton have had? Because they gave a good account of themselves and Anfield, they spent a lot of money, but they, since that game they really haven't been able to put results together. Actually, it's not my job to be surprised about the Everton season, to be honest. I, I, and that's like this, I don't, only because Everton, I don't watch now each game of Everton. It's like with all the other teams in, in the Premier League, I can't have no time for that. So in the moment when we prepare that, then, then I see a lot of games of them. And they have a, have a really a really good team, I have to say. That's a really good team. It's, it's, I can go through, it's uh, the England's number one, really good centre-halves and a lot of them as well. And the full-backs experienced and and football was really good. In the middle of the park, quality, yeah, real quality, and up front we don't have to talk about that. So the wings quick and 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 really talented, and and in the centre they have I think three different options. So and really good players yeah, with Richardson and the other, and, and and the other guys. So that's um, that's impressive. But how what happened? I I have no idea. So I'm not surprised because I don't look often enough there. Putting uh, Sadio Mane uh, up front and scoring two goals this week, do you think that helped him in terms of his confidence? I don't think that Sadio in the moment has any problems with confidence because he's um, in a since weeks and months maybe um, one of our most stable players. So he's really he's, he's, he's performing on an uh, unbelievable high level since uh, the, the whole season already. Yes, and maybe there was one or two games I don't remember them, but uh, when he didn't. But he was very stable in the last couple of weeks, and it's just nice to see that he that he um, uh, a player with his qualities and his attitude. He really wants to help the team in different positions because we never played it. That was why we did it with him in the centre because the difference was not that big to the position he played before. So he is in a very good moment. Hopefully, it <coughs> may continue until May 2028 or so. I'm not sure exactly how long he will play. And on Sunday, you're going to have a fight between another fight, it's Sadio Mane against Idris Hage, two Senegalese. Yeah, yeah, true. They, yeah, they play. Maybe they will meet, but they, they, they played not. For, they don't play the first time against each other, so they they are used to it. Um, and yeah, I don't I don't know if they are if they are best friends on the on the pitch yet. I couldn't see it. 
<laughs> so they obviously take it as professionals. So that's good. That's how it should be. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Welcome.